Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, I'm Cowboy Jack and today we're here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. We're going to go check out the Texas Wildlife Exhibit. Let's go get a look at it, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Wow, we're actually walking through the Hall of Curiosities right now. There's a ton to see in here, but I'm really excited to see all those really cool Texas animals. Boy, hey, you want to get a look at where we're at today? Right here in Houston, Texas. And that's Texas is part of this big, big United States. That's our country from sea to shining sea. Anyways, let's go check out that wildlife exhibit. Come on, guys. Wow. Whoa, look out for that mountain lion up there. All right. Now, here we are at the Farish Hall of Texas Wildlife. We're gonna get to take a look all around and see all these cool animals they have for us to see. Oh, wow. So this is the coastal wetlands and marsh area right here. Boy, there's a lot to see. This would be like what we see over by the border of Louisiana, maybe down in like Victoria, outside of Beaumont, even in Houston area. There's a whole lot of critters in here. If you take a look right there, that's a big old American alligator standing up. And it looks like he's, he's trying to have a little snack out of that boar hog right there. Wow, there's a red-tailed hawk. Look at all these different types of ducks and birds. I see wood ducks, I saw a mallard. There's a beaver, look at that beaver back there. Wow, there's even a couple of American bison back there. Whew, there is a lot of animals to see. Oh, this is the High Plains area. The High Plains would be like up in the Panhandle of Texas, maybe Lubbock, Amarillo, those types of areas. And even further west, like uh, all Lovin County, Texas. Lovin County, Texas is the least populated county in all of Texas. Not many folks live there, but I know a lot of these critters do. Look at those pronghorn antelope. Those are absolutely majestic animals. Did you know that they're actually some of the fastest hoofed animals in North America? Not some of the fastest, they are the fastest hoofed animal in North America. And then I really like this guy right here, a badger. And then we've also got these prairie dogs over here. Boy, prairie dogs are really cool. I love them because they make these holes in the ground and they kind of peek their heads out and they say like, hey guys, what's going on? And then they duck back down into their holes. But they duck down into their holes to protect themselves from all of the birds of prey that are trying to get them, just like that big horned owl right behind them, right there. Wow, <laughs> let's keep on exploring. There's so much to see. Look over here. That's what I call a song dog. It's actually a coyote. Wow, he's howling at the moon. Isn't that cool? And then of course we've got our old, old foe right there, Mr. Skunk. You wouldn't want to walk behind him or sneak up on him. They have a scent gland that they can spray and it, the smell is really, really strong and it stays with you for a long time. They used to say after you get sprayed by a skunk, you'd have to take a bath in tomato juice. Now there's like professionally produced things to get rid of that smell. But if you ever see a skunk, the best advice is just to stay clear of it. Wow, these are some of the biggest hoofed game animals we have in Texas right here. These are elk and they are just absolutely huge. These, we still have some free roaming herds of these 
and state parks here in Texas, but their numbers have declined a lot. So we try to do a lot to protect them. They are absolutely beautiful animals. They have such huge horns. They're like the big brother of our native white-tailed deer. Wow, something that a lot of people don't know about that we have in Texas, we actually have a lot of them. This guy right here, that's a porcupine. We have those all over the state. A lot of people think they're just out in West Texas, but they actually are in the hill country and some of the northern parts. They have these really prickly tails. They're really cool. But then right behind them, I see our old friend, the mountain lion. Some people call it a cougar or a panther. They are really big cats. They're the largest wild cats we have in the state of Texas. And they actually were declining in numbers, but they're making a huge comeback. We see them in the hill country. A lot of people claim to see them in East Texas, and there are confirmed sightings of them too. But they really like West Texas out by Del Rio and of course all of the Big Bend area. And then we've got these big horn sheep. Uh-oh, look out, there's a rattlesnake crawling up the rocks right there. You wouldn't want to tango with that guy. You'll always know when you come up on a rattlesnake because they have this rattle on their tail and they make a big, big noise when they shake it like this. And what they're doing, they're not being mean, they're actually warning you like, hey, I don't want to hang out with you right now, so if you come any closer, I might bite you. And they have a bad, bad poison to them, so you wouldn't want to get bit. So always listen to a rattlesnake's tail. If you see a rattlesnake, of course, just back away. He's busy living his snake life, doing his thing. You're in his territory, not the other way around. <laughs> Look at this little guy right here. I absolutely love these critters. Do you guys know what that is? That's what we call a ringtail or a ringtail cat. It's a really unique little critter that we have all over the state of Texas. People think we don't have them everywhere. You just don't see them. They're nocturnal and they're very, very sneaky. Think about it like a house cat. They don't, they are real sneaky and they try to hide all over the place. So we have them everywhere, you just don't see them every day. Here we are in the East Texas Piney Woods where most of my family's from, part of the state that I really love. Look at this bobcat right here. He looks like he's getting himself a bob white quail. Wow, there's a couple of big owls up in that pine tree. One thing about the Piney Woods is that they don't lie about the name. It's called the Piney Woods for a good reason. It's absolutely chock full of pine trees. Look at that. A red-headed woodpecker about to make a snack out of that pine tree. See if there's any beetle larvae in there. <laughs> That is so cool. East Texas has a lot, a lot of woodpeckers because they do very well with pine trees. It's a softer wood than some of the hardwoods like oaks. Wow, look at all these birds up in these trees. Now look right below that tree. What's sitting right there? That's a possum. Possums are really cool because they're one of the few marsupials we have in North America. So much like a kangaroo, when a mama possum gives birth, she keeps her young in a little pouch. And then right next to him, you see old Ricky the raccoon eating a crawfish there. I just love raccoons. They're such clever, funny little animals. They like to wash their food in water. Oh my goodness, guys, look at that, a black bear. Now, black bears have been on the decline in East Texas, so we've been doing a lot as a state to promote their well-being and get them, you know, having a population boom again. And they're really making a great comeback. It's incredible. Wow, now we're moving into like the South Texas region and closer to Mexico, and we see some really cool animals. So that big bird with the red face right there, some people call that a Mexican eagle, but it's actually known as a caracara. They are birds of prey and they can fly really, really fast. And then right behind him is a white-nosed coati. Those are so cool. You see them a lot in Mexico, not that much in South Texas, but we do actually have them. And then, remember I just told you guys about rattlesnakes and how they rattle their tails? Well, look right here, this rattlesnake is rattling his tail. 
Wow, he's taking a little nap right now, but I bet if he woke up, he'd rattle his tail and tell us, hey, keep it moving, Cowboy Jack. Ooh, he just moved his head, you see that? That's the noise you would hear when a rattlesnake rattles his tail. And then, oh, I see something back there, but let's get a better angle at him. This is one of my favorite animals in all of Texas. It's such an amazing success story. So this is an ocelot. It is a really unique and, and cool cat. I just love their markings and their wildcat here in Texas. Their numbers had almost disappeared to the fact that they are, they are federally protected, but even our state was working really hard to protect them. We managed to bring in some breeding populations all the way from Mexico, and they're making a huge comeback in South Texas. Guys are seeing them on their deer leases all over the state now. Ooh, we almost missed the state reptile. There's the great horned lizard right there. We call it just the horny toad. Unfortunately, the horny toads have a really hard time making it with fire ants. That's their, their main competition. They, they don't do well with fire ants, and when fire ants started taking over Texas, the horned toad population really went down, but they're making a huge comeback. You see, our state is all about preserving our wildlife. We work really hard to do great things for our ecosystems, and even the hunters play a huge role in boosting the numbers of the animals that we have that are native to the state. We try to protect them, preserve them, and make sure they're breeding and healthy, so we have more of them to look at. Just like these guys right here, the javelinas, or the collared pickery as they're also known. These javelinas work a lot like hogs. You'll see them a lot in South Texas. In fact, someone had them run up into their store in San Antonio last year. That was crazy. Here's the lower coast. This is like the great Laguna Madre as we call it. This is the ocean, the part of the Gulf of Mexico that we share with our neighbors in, at Mexico. And this right here, the Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. And it looks like she's actually laying eggs right here. These sea turtles can get really large and they're such beautiful creatures. There's the nest where she's laying her eggs and she would cover those up and head back out to sea. So whenever you're on a Texas beach and you see an area that's fenced off by like some sort of markers or barrier, what that is is probably a sea turtle nest. We do a lot to protect them and promote their well-being. All right, now here we are closer to my part of the Texas, what we call the Coastal Oak Mott. So this has your typical white-tailed deer. Look at that deer. That's a, ooh, I don't know if I can count all those points. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's, a, that's probably a 12-point buck right there. He's pretty big. Look, there's another wildcat back there and another mountain lion. And then here, one of my favorite little critters, that's an armadillo. They are so iconic to the state of Texas. They're really cool. A lot of times you won't know that they're around, but if you see a lot of digging in your flower beds at home or stuff like that, probably thanks to an armadillo. They're really cool because look at the way their back is. That's actually armor that they wear. So they're capable of rolling up into a ball and completely protecting their bodies in a shell. Kind of like a turtle, except it's more flexible. And then, ooh, look out, a coral snake. See that snake right there? That's a Texas coral snake. So the way you know it's a coral snake and not a king snake is you look at its color patterns. You see how this one has red and yellow touching? That means it's a coral snake. If it was red and black touching, that means it doesn't have venom, it's not a poisonous snake, and it's just a king snake. They have very similar markings, but you gotta pay attention to the, to the colors. You know, all snakes are good snakes. You don't wanna just not like venomous snakes. You just have to be extra careful around them. Whenever I see a snake, I just leave it alone. <laughs> Look at this really big turkey here. Turkey is a huge flightless bird. Well, they're not actually that flightless. They can fly for a little while. But wow, we like them on Thanksgiving. And they played a huge role in the settlement of Texas because they provided a, a good game source for food and, and all kinds of things for the settlers. Wow, here we've got some old crows. These old crows, they make such a funny noise. I wish I could make it. <laughs> don't forget to look up at all these little birds. These birds are so cool. I wish I knew all of their names, but I don't. Ooh. 
Watch out for Mr. Smelly right there. That's another skunk like we talked about. They have a really strong smell. You don't want to get too close to those guys. That's Mr. Pepe Le Pew. Woo -wee. And here we have those buffalo bison. This one has a little baby. Look at the baby. Now these guys used to roam all over the state of Texas and they were great for the Native Americans, the uh, indigenous people of Texas. But uh, unfortunately they were over hunted and over you know, consumed. We used to eat a lot of their meat. Nowadays we have a lot of cows for that. But these are such beautiful animals and there's a ton of them on private ranches. Just the other day I heard that Texas actually has private populations of up to 250,000 of these guys across the state. Guys, I got so excited earlier, we walked right past this. Look up right here. That's right, that's a nesting pair of bald eagles. These are such an iconic animal for the state of Texas, but also for the United States of America. You'll see it on all of our official seals, all of our currency, almost everywhere. They are such incredible birds. We used to have a nest of them in the Woodlands, Texas, and that nest was actually about 12 feet in diameter, and they estimate it weighed almost a thousand pounds. They are really, really big birds. If you're ever lucky enough to see one, you better thank your lucky stars because they are absolutely incredible. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, what an incredible time here today at the Houston Museum of Natural Science in the Texas Wildlife Exhibit. We saw so many animals all across the state of Texas, it made my head spin. Whew. Hey, wait a second, are you guys laughing at my hair? Okay, I'll put the hat on. <laughs> Anyways, this has been such a fun time. I hope you had a blast. I know I did. And I hope you'll come along with us on all of our adventures because we go on a lot of them. But until next time I see you, yeah.